I can't take a heart that's broke making over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take. Well, let me welcome you one and all to today's program, a time of refreshing. It has been with us for quite some time, maybe going for three years, over two for sure. Many persons have sat here and have presented the gospel as the Lord would have anointed them, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. And persons who have no esteemed ministry title, but they have the word of God in their hearts. So we're delighted. So may I welcome all of you today. Yes, I welcome all of you on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok and the others. We're happy to have you. Some of you are being here with me for the first time. So please understand, we take a little while to familiarize ourselves fully with all of what's happening. All right, so we welcome you from home and abroad, near and far. Not to be outdone is PFM Family Television, Flow Channel 602 and 672, Digicel Play Channel 20. Happy for you, everybody. Welcome, Sister Raquel. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you, sir. And was, welcome back. Thank you. I, I was thinking about sitting with you here today. And I said, I'm going to. I throw spanners in works from time to time. I said, I'm going to ask you, how is Mrs. Stewart? That yes. means I'm speaking to the wife. Yes, sir. Mrs. Stewart is thankful. I'm grateful for Mr. Stewart and the family. Um, we are, we are, we are giving thanks to God for what he has been doing for us and continues to do in our lives. And, oh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity for life, sir. You see how inclusive she is? I asked her about Mrs. Stewart, and she ensures that she covers everybody in the family. That's wonderful. All right, so you're a mother of two, aren't you? Yes, Bishop, I am. So how is mother? How is mother today? Mother, uh, sorry, a little pulled in the areas because of the children, things happening in the background, but giving thanks, uh, mother is staying, is steering the, the, the ship, steering the ship. I would say the same thing is applied to grandmother of one. Yes, sir, grandmother of one. Yeah. Got a call that she wasn't cooperating at daycare, so I had to be steering that ship too, so. <laughs> and finally, how is missionary steward? Mm. Now this is where you go beyond the family, you cover everybody as a minister of the gospel. How is missionary steward? Sir, fighting the good fight of faith, pushing oh. through, being hold on the, the promise that the Lord has made for me. Yes. Thanking God that he has afforded me the opportunity to be here, in, especially in this ministry, at a time as this. I'm indeed thankful and grateful. Okay. Well, to God be the glory. Yes, you heard it from her, okay? Mistress Stewart is doing quite well. Mother Stewart is doing quite well. Grandmother Stewart is doing quite well. And not to talk about missionary Stewart. Mm -hmm. She is doing quite well. To God be the glory. All right. Let's say a prayer and then enter, in up, enter upon our discussion for today. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for bringing us together to share today's program, a time of refreshing. We know that many persons have been waiting for today's program. It has become a lifeline for many, spiritual lifeline. We ask you to use us for your glory and for your honor. And grant, O oh Lord, that all the things that we say will redound to blessing, increase of people's faith, so that you can do even more than you have done in their lives. 
bless us around this set. Bless the operators of the equipment there on the other side. When all is said and done, Lord, be thou glorified. And we shall without fail give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Well, you tell us that we are going to read a beautiful story from the book of Ruth. Uh, that uh, wonderful Moabitish woman. Uh, chapter 1 is an outstanding chapter that many women relate to more than anything else. And of course, from the verse 16 through the verse 18, a very outstanding verse is certainly among the others. But before we get into that, we want to remind our viewers that we meet on Friday evening, this evening, yeah, for worldwide prayer meeting. We come into your homes, into your places of business. Unfortunately, if you are behind bars, we come there too. If you're in the hospitals, we come there too. I've gone to hospitals to visit from time to time. And I see persons there viewing Power of Faith television. So we will come to you starting at 6.30 for Worldwide Prayer Meeting. Sunday morning we meet in the will of the Lord at 7 o'clock. As usual, we believe God's going to give us a great service. Amen. Relaunch of youth ministry. Of course, you know that many things went on a little downward trek during COVID pandemic, but thank God there's a resurgence of spiritual activity. So we're relaunching the youth ministry on Sunday morning. And importantly, Sunday evening, 26th, yes, the Portmore Ministers Fraternal will meet in our sanctuary here, Lot 13, Portmore Town Center, to Reconsecrate or consecrate all our ministers, all the ministers in the Portmore Ministers Fraternal. So please, it's a it's an open invitation for for whoever you want to come by, come by and be blessed. But Saint Thomas is having their one day convention also yes, on Sunday. So if you are the, out there in the east, Dallas area, and those general areas, Pastor Logan will be happy to have you. They're at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. And they go through until about 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, somewhere there. All right, so please bear those in mind. And we'll tell you a little more as time goes by. Are there any other things we need to remind our viewers on? Um, Grove Road Assembly, they're finishing their week of crusade tonight. Is the mm -hmm. last night of the crusade for them. Okay. Yes, sir. Grove Road, they have been in crusade. Uh, for, since the past week, tonight will be the closing night. 47 A Grove Road, so you can go by and you will be blessed for sure as the word of the Lord will be, be ministered to you. What? Yes, go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. And on tomorrow, we have the long awaited Missionaries Council prayer breakfast. It begins at 7 30 a.m., go through until 12 noon. The upper room sanctuary. You know, I wonder how she took so long to say that. A missionary. All right, so you need to be here for that wonderful event on on tomorrow. Yeah. Did you say it will be the upper room in sanctuary? In the upper room sanctuary, sir. All right, so see you, everybody. Those who can will be happy to have you. All right, Dolly Smith, thank you for welcoming me back. You think I've gone somewhere? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. The Lord bless you and delighted to be with you. All right, so we spoke concerning Ruth chapter 1 from verse 16. And I want the lady to read it. You have, your, have it ready for you? Ready yes, to Michelle. read there? Okay. Reading from verse 16, sir? Yes, 16 through 18. Let, let's keep it to 18. And it reads, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. 
Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Verse 18, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Oh my Glory God. To God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. We are talking about a woman on a mission determined not, not to, to quit. quit. Not to quit. Lord have mercy. My goodness, Naomi tried everything to dissuade Ruth from continuing the journey with her. But her mind was fully made up. When and a woman's mind is fully made up, sir. Yeah. You can't turn her back. The former Prime Minister, Portia Sims Miller, she speaks of the power of a woman. Mm -hmm. Bless you, former Prime Minister. If you hear this message, please let her know we're praying for her, okay? She's my good friend, Mrs. Portia Sims Miller. I say that publicly, wonderfully, without any political connotation to that, okay? It's a wonderful lady. Yeah, so, so this woman was so determined that I know I'm on a mission. Yes, sir. And I will not be deterred. deterred. I will not quit at all. But take me through some of these beautiful things that you have here, introducing this story. Okay, Bishop. And again, because, because after you're through, we are going to talk concerning, you know, three points. Yes, sir. She was not only determined not to quit, but she was decisive, yes, sir. determined, she was dogged, she was focused, and we'll see where this takes us. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, so just to say officially thank you for allowing me to share with you, I take it a privilege, and it's indeed an honor, sir. And I'm a woman on a mission determined not to quit today. Mm -hmm. Okay, this story is of God's love for us. It was set in a time of the judges when the judges ruled Israel. And these were extremely difficult times. And according to Judges 17, verse 6b, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. So there was no law. It was what I wanted to do. The Jewish family of Elimelech, Naomi, and their two sons, Marlon and Chilion, lived in Bethlehem of Judah, which was the house of bread. But at that time, there was no bread, Bishop, only mm. famine. My Lord. And this frames for us the, the spiritual decay that was happening during those times in Israel that caused Elimelech to try to find a better way for like, way of life for his family. Mm -hmm. But you'd want to question, sir, why would a Jew who serves a monotheistic God and lives in a monotheistic country, that's a one God country, mm -hmm. want to leave and go into a, 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 a country that where they have many gods. Yeah. Right? Monotheism, monotheism and polytheism. And polytheism so. All right, we do not support polytheism, not the plurality of gods. We support monotheism. There is one God. Yes, Thou should have, shalt have no other God beside me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This country was Moab, and they openly practiced idolatry and sacrificed their children to God, to the gods that they served. It showed the possibility of where the family of Elimelech was at the time. And it also showed the stark cultural differences that caused them when they entered that country, sir, to be an outcast. Mm -hmm. But the all-knowing God that we serve allowed them this process as he knew the plans that he had to save his people. And from every bad, bad situation, he would turn it around for their good. So he allowed them to leave the house of bread to enter into spiritual famine. Wow, what a God. What a God, sir. What a he God. moves in mysterious, in mysterious ways, mysterious he says. Ways, wonders to perform. Yes, sir. And when you can't see his heart, you when you can't see his, his hands, hands, you trust his you heart. You trust his heart. Yes, because Bishop. He's never working against us. Never. Even when it would appear to us as though a job situation, God's working against you. A Joseph situation, God's working against you. He's never, ever working never, against his ever, people. Never, ever, sir. Yes. He always has plans for us. In Jeremiah, it says, I know the plans I have for you. As a promise he made to the Israelites. He reminded them of it. Yes. Yes, sir. So he's always working out a way. 
Okay, sir. So this woman that we just read about, the book of Ruth, is named after her. And she was from Moab, from Moab. And she met and fell in love, married one of Elimelech's son. And the two cultures were intertwined. And she held on to this new faith that she found. And it changed the trajectory of all of their lives forever, sir. And that proves for us that you can never come in contact with the God that we serve, the Jehovah God, and remain the same. Wow. Because our life was completely transformed. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. She, as a woman on a mission, we know that once you connect with God and you get God's counsel in your life, you'll never be the same. And we see that in Proverbs 19, 21, it says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Yes. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand yes. so whatever god puts inside of you when you listen to the word of god he will take you through we sometimes have many voices calling on us from all corners of our lives or whether it is a wise counsel from the lord through his servants like our bishop here mm -hmm. that will remain and take us through into our destiny when a woman hears and responds to the call of god she'll be mighty mightily used of him mm. during her lifetime and as Bishop mentioned earlier, there are some keywords that we want to, in, to in, include in our discussions today. They may not be the main points, but they will be intertwined in the discussion. A woman on a mission is considered to be decisive. She's determined, she's dogged, she's focused and obedient, obedient to God-inspired authority. And these characteristics will help to build capacity and help us to have tunnel vision into what we are to achieve and cause us not to quit so we'll hold on to whatever we have inside what god has, the concept god has given us we'll hold on to those and we have a few points bishop that i'd like to share today we can have yeah. the discussions around those points yeah you know before you continue yes bishop we stay in jamaica maybe other parts of the world world too winners never quit yes sir and quitters Never win. That's the last point I have in my, in my Oh, you have it there. Yes, oh, I have it in my heart, okay? <laughs> Winners never quit. So the point I want to make is this. It is very important for us to see, consider, believe yes, in sir. ourselves yes, as winners. As winners. Regardless of what the circumstances are. Once you, you see yourself, you believe in yourself, you project yourself as a winner. winner. That's a... An incentive to keep you going. So positive thoughts. Oh my goodness. Pushes you forward. Yes. Yes, Bishop. So this says a woman on a mission is keen to recognize her Kairos moment. And a Kairos moment is a, is an upper is a right now opportunity, right? At Please this allow moment. me to acknowledge Denise Roach. I always acknowledge her when I get here. She always show up. Denise, how are you? <laughs> All right, bless you. And Millicent Evangelist Clark. Bless you too. Sorry. Yes, You're Bishop. working with me. You have to multitask. Yes, Bishop. I'm that's, learning. That's I'm how learning, I do Bishop. Thing. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. And as we said before, Ruth, being a Moabitess woman, some, some, some schools say she was a priestess in the, in the temple where they served the, the mm -hmm. many gods. Sir, and she might have had many other men and worshipped these many gods. However, the purpose of the Lord brought Elimelech and his family to her in Moab. And Moab was considered God wash pot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can explain that term for us, please. Uh, not this moment. Uh, it is said, but it's in the scripture. It is, sir. In Moab Psalms, is God's wash pot. Yes, sir. The truth is, I've never really studied it carefully, research it, and cross references to yes, see sir. exactly what that terminology mm -hmm. means. But when I read it, I was yeah. saying, wow, wash pot. So, you know, wash belly, but wash pot is something completely new. Yeah. Yes, sir. And as again, we said, there was spiritual famine. And um, her husband who taught her a new way of life. And she never let go. And, and she discovered who God was, and she did not let go. Another Kairos moment happened for her 10 years later, sir, when her husband died. Jesus. And her mother-in-law decided. By then, all the men in the family died. So you can imagine having a house with no men, no one to lead, just the two, the three ladies, her other sister-in-law, Orpah, and she was also a Moabitess, and your mother-in-law, Naomi. 
no one to lead to guide and in those cultures sir you know the man is the head it still yeah. is the same here yes, yes. but it was more pronounced in that culture so Naomi decided that she was going to go back to where she knew God would take care of her where she would have the resources she needed and she told them that I'm leaving and so yeah, we read the story a while ago in the scripture she 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 said no you can't leave me. Naomi said, I have nothing to give you. I have no husband. Mm. I have no family. I have no wealth. I have wow. no resources. Nothing. And our sister Arpa had said, okay, I'm going to go back. Go back to, she decides to go back to the adulterous life. But hoping that she, it would have been better for her. But this wasn't the case for Ruth. Ruth knew, she saw beyond what was present. She saw beyond the, the stark reality of nothing. And she had a hope in her heart, sir, that beyond this brokenness, and the cultural differences, she saw that God, she knew the God, she now knew a God who had a promise for her. Yes. And she and she would not be left behind. Mm. And that is the vow she made, the very, very strong words that she used in verses 16 to 17. Yeah, those are powerful. Powerful words, sir. Oh my God. And those the vow was life transforming. Jesus. The vow said nothing, not mm. even death, nothing but death would separate <laughs> them. Nothing at all, sir. Mm -mm. She was no longer, no longer was she a Moabitess by practice, but she had now been engrafted into the Jewish traditions. And those for her proved to be more rewarding and fulfilling than the cruel, unfulfilled life that she once led. Yeah. So when we as children come into God's kingdom and we taste of the goodness of God, there's no way you want to turn back and go back out there. Not at, not all. at all. Not at all. A woman you, on a mission. You, you can't know, look back, sir. Well, let's see. A man on a mission to everybody. Everybody, sir. Everybody. Paul brings all of us into it and he raises the question, what shall separate us from the, the love, love of Christ? God. And he said some powerful things there. Romans chapter 8, I think. Yes, sir. Verse 37 mm -hmm. going down. Shall tribulation, shall, distress, shall peril, famine, nakedness, peril, peril. sword, height, or depths, or any other creature, he said, nothing, nothing, nothing shall nothing, be able to separate us. I nothing, tell you, nothing, 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 this is powerful. So you want to consider yourself on a mission for God, okay? Amen, amen. Christian people from all denominations, consider yourself on God's on mission. mission. And know for sure that the enemy is going to test you, is going to try you, is going to bring pressure to bear upon you. But say like Ruth said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not giving in. I'm not going back. No. Minister Dr. Petrova has a famous saying, no surrender, uh, no retreat, no surrender, no surrender. death before, before dishonor. dishonor. A favorite saying of hers, no retreat, no surrender, death before dishonor. And I think, you know, as Christians, when we, when we make, vows like those you know you don't have to be exact words of roots etc etc but when you vow something to god you know that you have what to keep you going yes, sir. because you don't want to go back on it you know so this is what we're seeing here a woman on a mission determined not to quit and you know before you continue missionary steward i was running my mind my mind about some other women who were really on mission not in our in our scripture or any of that i consider anna of first samuel chapter one she was on a mission yes sir yeah she was mocked she was jeered she was criticized by penina her husband second wife those days they had mm -hmm. many wives plurality of wives and penina mocked her and jeered her and cursed her every day because she had children and Anna had no children. Had no children. And Anna went before God <laughs> and she said, Lord, if you bless your servant with a man child, I'll give him to you all the days of his life. And the scripture tells us that at times when she was praying, her lips were moving, but there no were no words. audible words mm -hmm. coming out. That at one time the priest thought she was drunk and said, Hannah, you're drinking too much wine. She said, No, I'm not drinking any wine. I'm pouring out my soul, my distress, my grief unto the Lord. And all the story ended. The Lord heard her prayer. 
she was determined that God would bless her. And God blessed her with Samuel. Wonderful prophets. Amen. Huh? Amen. Came right in to deliver God's people. Yes, sir. So it's a wonderful thing to be fully persuaded. Yes, it is, sir. You, you've been serving the Lord for how long now? I don't know. What time? Sir, in May, 24 years. 24 years? Yes, Bishop. May 2023? Yes, Bishop. Okay. So you've been serving the Lord for less than 50% of the years that I've been serving him, okay? Yes, sir. And I said that to say, you must have had some discouraging moments. Oh, jeez. You must sir. have had some times when you feel, my goodness, I can't take this anymore. But here are you today. Here, here am I, sir. 24 you know, years. The scripture says anyone who puts his hand to the plow and takes it back is not worthy, sir. And those scriptures always come back to remind me. When yeah. you get very low, you just go deeper in God and yes. say, God. I always say, God, God, God. Those are the, word, those are the words I utter when I am in deep distress. Millicent is reminding us of what 1 Samuel 1 and verse 15 says. And Anna answered and said, no, my Lord. All right, you're gone with it. Mm -hmm. I'm pouring out my distress, my complaint to God, for I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have neither drunk, I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Before the Lord. Huh? That's it, and God came through for her. Amen, sir, he did. Your mind got to be fully made up, friend. You yes. can't. This is not experimenting. It's not an experimentation. Once you surrender your life to the Lord and decide to serve him, burn the bridges behind you. You won't burn them all at once, okay? All will not be burned at once. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, little by little, as you go along, our prayer mother, Evangelist Jennifer Rose, says she felt discouraged sometimes too. Mm. Can you believe a prayer warrior? Prayer yes, mother, sir. we all get discouraged. Prayer sometimes, mother, you sir. feel discouraged sometimes? Oh, not, not since human. you become a prayer leader. Come on. <laughs> Say better than that. Uh, mm -hmm. We are human, sir. We do get Jesus. discouraged. We do get discouraged, Bishop. I said to someone this morning, very early, I was out, because I went to Kingston this morning, did some stuff and all kind of things. And I said to someone, hear me and hear me well. There is no super to any of us no, human. No, no super to any of us human. No, There's no sir. superhuman on the earth, okay? We all are clothed in a frail garment, a very frail garment of flesh. It is frail. Flesh. I leave here last week, Friday, feeling very good. Did a wonderful job for the time I spent in office. And by 7 o'clock, I find my whole body began to convulge. Yes. And I couldn't hold myself together. Mm -hmm. I said, my God, what is this? What is happening? What is happening? If I were to hold my phone and make a phone call, I could not could do, do it. it sir. I could not do it. <sighs> said, my Shaking. goodness. So you see, there's no super to any one of us human. We have to just trust God. Take him at his word, at his word. live by faith, do the best we can. Continue, yes, my dear. Yes, sir. as you mentioned about um, Hannah in the temple praying, I remember there, there, there's a thing about women. Whenever we are mission-driven and determined, we go silent. When a woman shuts down and doesn't speak, she's doubling down mm. for, for mission to be accomplished. She gets determined and she is going to accomplish whatever it is that she has set her mind to. Whether bad or good. Unfortunately, whether bad or good, that's the strength of a woman. God has given us that. Um, and as you mentioned, Hannah, I have here, sir, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. Yes. She was a woman on a mission, determined not to quit, sir. She, the issue that she had, she should not be in the public sphere, but she heard. Mm -hmm. And you, when you hear, and it's, it, is, it is birth in your spirit that this person can do something for me. Come high or low, you're going to reach out to that person, sir. And she presented herself, knowing the condition, expended all of her funds. We know the story. And she stretched forth and she touched mm -hmm. and she achieved her goal. She didn't quit. Regardless of the fact that men around her could have stoned her, killed her. The obstacles that stood in her way Sir, were more than sufficient <laughs> to deter her and say, no, I, I can't even try that. this. Hmm? The obstacles that stood in her way, yes, those that were personal, 
those that were impersonal, yes, they sir. were all there. All there. But she was on a mission. On a mission, sir. Determined to get her deliverance. Amen. And uh -huh. we also have the Shunammite woman, sir. This is after the miracle child was born and died. And she purposed to get the prophet Elijah to come back. And she yeah. said, it, it shall be well. That is her term. it shall be. No care what is happening, no care what the situation presented. She put the dead child on the man of God's bed. That's how, that's how high her faith was. That once he came back, the child would be resurrected. You know, I want to take you up on that because... I'm a sickler for accuracy. Yes, sir. To some extent. Yes, sir. I'm wondering if she said it shall be well. She said it shall be well to her husband first. Okay. And her husband asked her, yeah. well, where are you going? The man is not expected back right now. She said, I'm going to see him and it shall be well. Okay. It shall be well. Because uh, I think she actually used the words also, it is well. It is well. well. Yes. When Gehazi, the servant, That's asked it. her. That's what's in my yes, mind. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So she was a woman determined, sir. She settled up the horse or the ass, and she went, rode by herself as a woman traveling. I'm not sure if it was safe for her to travel, but she had a servant with her. And she wouldn't talk to Gehazi. It was the servant that she wanted. Mm. Yeah, because she was a woman on a mission, determined that her child must be resurrected. You know, as women, you know what it feels like when, you, when a thing is wrong with your child. Your mm. womb inside quivers. Even if you have no womb, it still quivers. The area quivers. So, you know, she was determined. She was, she, was, she was set in her mind. This must happen. You promised me this child, so come, fix it. Fix it. It can't, it can't be this way. It is well. It is well. It is well, It is yes. well, sir. Yes. It is well. It is well. Really it is well. This, put, it, put it on the screen for us. Is it well with thee? Is it well with the child? Is it well with everybody? Yes, she sir. says, it is, it is well. well. Yeah. It is well. It Praise is well. God. Tremendous. So the whole question of being determined is very, very important. Yes, it is, sir. You know, we started out with Ruth, and we have said quite a bit so far, looking at other women. Yes, sir. But believe me, when you look at the tenacity of those women, the hurdles that they had to scale, cross, yes, surmount, to get the victory that they got, it says a whole, whole lot. lot. You know, and it says to us as Christians today that things will not come on a plateau. We say, <laughs> no, no, no. In church, we sing, it's not an easy road we're traveling to heaven. Many are the toils on the way, but Jesus goes before us and he brightens the journey Amen. and he lightens the heavy load. Amen. Things, things are going to happen from time to time. But take God as his word. Mm -hmm. Sophia telling us it is well, it is well, it is well. It is well, Sophia, the Lord bless you. It Wonderful. Well. Yes, so we, we've got to be determined. Determined, sir. And let the, the emissaries of the enemy know that your mind is fully made up. Fully made up. Fully you know, made I, can't, up. I can't let you get away without referring to one of my favorite scripture of commitment and dedication and everything. I think it's Acts chapter 20, the Apostle Paul, yes, sir. when he was determined to go to Jerusalem. And Agabus the prophet picked up a girdle and said, mm -hmm. this, whoever owns this girdle, bonds and affliction mm -hmm. is awaiting mm -hmm. them in Jerusalem. So, my word, we would tell that man, don't go down there. <laughs> Do not go down there. Oh, my goodness, may I find it and read something for me. Yeah, it's better to read something. But Paul says, let me tell you the truth, my brethren. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. He says, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying, bonds and affliction abide me. But none of these things move me, Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I received of the Lord of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And he went further to say, And behold, now I know that you, ye among all whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face Amen. no more. Amen. No, 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 no. Hold on, Paul. Come on. 
Come Jesus, on, boy. Jesus. <laughs> you, you're not going to see my face in it. Because if God does intervene and perform a miracle, the, the, the prophecy of Agabus is going to, to be start. Fulfilled. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my last mission. You'll see my face no more, mm -hmm. but I'm going. Going, determined. Oh, going. my goodness. Determined, Bishop. Yeah. Amen. All right, Millicent, thank you. Picked up the land, bound his own hand and feet, said, Thus said the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem find the man who owns this girdle. Hmm? Jesus. Amen. Continue, my dear. I'm yes, just trucking on with you. Yes, You did a good job. Thank you. To God be the glory. Yeah. Sir, like Paul, as you mentioned, we have women on a mission when your when you, when your determination is in place you will it will bring you into your destiny mm. and like ruth she was brought into her destiny for which she was born to be named in the ge genealogy of jesus christ as she became the great grandmother of king david and you know david uh, there's the line of um that christ jesus came oh through. yes oh yes, yes. Sir. she was from a place of spiritual famine serving idols and she was elevated to the realms of a woman of virtue so much so that she was considered to be more valuable to naomi than seven sons when mm. they returned yes. and she met her kinsman redeemer who was boaz who became her husband and she and, and she they were restored she was named or considered in that time to be more valuable than seven sons and you know bishop for in that in that time a, a woman a woman needs son or men in her life yeah, in their oh lives yeah, oh to yes. protect them oh yes. from poverty because they, they, they weren't able to own property mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and so on so they would have to have a man to, to sustain them and what she brought into naomi's life the restoration that she allowed for was more valuable so that speaks volumes to, to a woman wow you know, tremendous she brethren you are with us on Time of refreshing. Bishop Davis here with you along with me, Missionary Raquel Stewart. She's doing a good job. I am a coach and a trainer and an empowerer, okay? Yes, you are, Bishop. I bring out of people sometimes what they have and don't know that they have it, okay? So we are doing a good job together today and we thank her for this wonderful presentation. Time of refreshing comes to you all days of the week, yeah, Monday to Friday, in different ways. On Wednesdays, we come to you from the church, as you know, fasting service. So please spread the word. Tell others on all the platforms that we are on, the cable channels, Flow and Digicel, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and another, okay? So spread the word and join us. And of course, remember that we are in the 40th year of our ministry amen, celebration. Amen. So it's a wonderful year for us. Yes, it is, sir. We're trusting God for great things. Our convention schedules for April 16 to 21. Would you plan to join us? It would be wonderful if you do. If at all you have been touched by or connected to Power of Faith Ministries, Overall, this protracted period, or for whatever period, send a greeting, pay a visit during our convention or at any other time, and we'll be happy to have you, happy to hear from you. And those of you who think you can send a love gift, <coughs> sorry, those of you who think you can send a love offer, it'd be wonderful too. We've got some envelopes given out for persons to give according to their own ability every man according to several abilities so let him give we have a lot to do still in this ministry and all our high cost item but god is good he's taken us through Amen. so bear those in mind and be mindful of us especially during this year a 40th year celebration all right, let continue, Missionary Stewart. We're going to take a few calls. I suppose we want to do that today, yes. but let's continue. Yes, sir. Um, mm. The third point that I would have here today is that 
a woman on a mission, once, once you continue in perseverance, it brings us to our deliverance. Yes. And Ruth, again, going back to the, to, the, to the story today, was relentless in not going back into idolatry. She was purposeful in remaining in the company of Naomi, not being aware that it would have taken her into a purpose or a destiny, which was, as he said before, to meet the king's man redeemer, Boaz, and restore the family's heritage because they would have lost everything in the famine when they and they left and i suppose they would have been taken away the property would have been taken away mm -hmm. and everything the story of esther is also depicting perseverance and bringing one into your deliverance mm -hmm. this is in esther 4 verse 16 where she said if i perish i perish but she was determined to see the king the israelites as you know at that time sir the, the decree was, was, was issued for all Jews oh my to be God. executed, to be annihilated. Mm. And our cousin Mordecai said, seek audience with the king. We need an intervention. The enemy cannot win. Because sometimes the devil comes up in us and he, and he, yes. and he road, roadblock you every yes. side. Yes. But God always sends a deliverer. And we give God thanks. She knew that she wasn't allowed in the king's um, space. Mm -hmm. Um, without permission, but she believed that the sector of light would have been um, handed out to her. And she also knew the consequences, she knew the consequences. for attending up on the presence she of knew the it, sir, but she without being called. Summoned. Yes. But mm -hmm. she reached out by God's grace and favor was, she found favor and it brought deliverance to the, to the nation of Israel. Mm. So we realized, and at the end of the day, the enemy was brought to shame. The enemy was hung publicly on the gallows that was determined for the Jew. You mean Mordecai. in his own house? In his own house. My God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. oh, God. Don't fight against the righteous, amen, okay? Amen, amen, amen. You know, <laughs> Amon's wife, and I think his daughters, had said to him, we tell you, you know, if you're trying to fight against the Jews, you can't, can't win. win. Do can't not win. fight against God's them. People. You can't fight against God's people and win. Fight and win. Oh, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Bishop. So those are my thoughts today. I'll just close it, wrap it up by saying God's redemption is perfectly interwoven in the story of Ruth. From the beginning, God had a plan and from Genesis to Revelation, you see it unfolding as both Ruth and Naomi had a determination and both persevered. Their posterity depended on the decisions that they made and our redemption was in their hands. The contrast of, the, of these two lives present was, was one was older and wiser, one was younger and seeking wisdom. Mm. One was a Jew, one was a Gentile. It was from this Jewish Gentile lineage, the, com the combination that grace came, that grace that gave us salvation. This Gentile world, we are part of the Gentile world, and it's through this relationship, this woman of determination, that we are here today to give God thanks. Oh my goodness. So a woman on a mission, determined not to quit, is sure to bring about redemption, not only for herself, but for her family, her community, and the nation. A winner never quits. Oh, and a praise the Lord. Never wins. Bridging, you don't get it much better than that. This is a wonderful story, which is considered to be a beautiful pastoral story. You just relate it and show the faithfulness of God yeah. with the committed. Yes, sir. The faithfulness of God with the surrendered. Yes, sir. The faithfulness of God. With those who have said, where he leads, I'll follow. I'll, follow. I'll go with him all, all the way. All the way, glory to God. And, uh, and we can't sit here and tell you that the path is always <laughs> smooth. We cannot sit here and tell you that it's always a bed of rose. Not at all, sir. No, we can't tell you that. Our thorns and thistles are along the pathway. Yes, Lord. But believe me, with your mind made up, God Almighty <clears throat> will always see come through, through for you. We'll see you through. Yeah, we'd love to make take a few calls if you want to make a call. The number is on the screen, 988. Well, 876-988-6262. Eight, 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 six, two, six, two. 
876-939-1500. We'll be happy to hear from you. Who want to make a call? Are you in Jamaica? Are you in the, some other parts of the world? What you want to share? <clears throat> Do you have a thought about this Ruth story? Maybe you can help us to understand a little more. We give chance for people to express themselves in different ways. A wonderful story here in the book of Ruth. Amen. Uh, how her life was ultimately enriched. Ultimately enriched. enriched because, oh yeah, because she decided, uh, I am going to go the path of righteousness. I'm going to go the path of holiness. I'm going to go the path of, well, Patricia is in Portland. Welcome, Patricia. <coughs> A blessed afternoon, Bishop. Blessed one and to, to you too. Missionary Stuart. Yes, ma'am. What a wonderful teaching. Bishop, I am so glad to see you. Yeah, ma'am. God bless you, sir. I came to fasting on Wednesday and I learned that you were not well. So I asked the Lord to lead me in fasting for my bishop. So this morning I was here sitting down and while I was praying for you, sir, I had to kneel down. The power mm. of God that came down so heavily. And the Lord reassured me that he's lifting you up, raising you up with a double portion mm. of anointing. I was kneeling down and putting on your shoes. I saw you sitting down in a chair and prayer warriors were all around you, sir. And I was putting on your shoes. So when I saw you today, I am just glorifying God and the power of the anointing that is coming from the studio. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. I am just giving God thanks for you. Yeah. Sir, you are our end time yeah. prophet. Oh, glory to God. And God is raising you up to do mighty things. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. Oh, Bishop, and we are happy. To see you, we are grateful and we are thankful for you, sir. God bless Thank you and you, your ministry. Sister Patricia, all the way in the luscious parish of Portland. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. God bless you. One. Now, before you go, are you still there? I'm still here, but I'm not hearing you too clearly. You're not hearing me? Why not? You're very low. Studio, they say our output audio is very low. Yes. My goodness, I'm sorry for that. I hope it has not been that way. Bishop, I am just grateful to God for you. So even if I am not hearing, you know, I can replay. I just turn the TV off <laughs> that it won't bring any confusion. But I am so rejoicing in my heart because God is good. Thank and you. And you're a faithful servant. And we are blessed to have you, sir. I heard you well, and I thank you so much for your prayers, okay? We yes, pray sir. one for another. That's what we ought to do. God bless you. Take care and keep well. Amen. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great. <laughs> All right, the numbers are appearing on the screen. Okay. Want to make a call? We'll be happy to hear from you. 876 988 one five zero zero <clears throat> so please let's hear from you we <clears throat> talked around this ruth story and missionary stewart did this beautiful presentation i chipped in here and there that's what i did okay i gave her full range to deliver and that's quite that's quite beautiful and she did a fantastic job but charmaine is in portmore Good afternoon, Bishop. Can you very hear me, Charmaine? Yes, they are very low. I can hardly hear you, but I just want to hug for prayer for he and Gail. He's in the Charmaine public. is saying I'm very low. She can't hear me. And I am talking on top of my voice. Sorry, don't strain your voice. Please don't. Oh, all right. Yes, what did you say now? I'm asking you for prayer for Ian Gill. He's in the public hospital. Just find out that he has stage four cancer. Wow. And he's a Christian, but he's giving up. 
He just flopped down, give up. Sorry to hear we will pray. Trust God to intervene on his behalf. Thank you, God. Trust Please the physician to, to do their back. best. Thank you for calling on his behalf. Thank you. God bless. Let's go to Spanish Town and hear what Pauline has to say. Welcome. Good afternoon, Bishop. You hearing me? Yes. Glad to see your face this morning. Glad to know that you are well again. Well, I'm and hardly hearing you now, Pauline. I can concur with her. So I just thank God that you are here with the missionary steward. You know, the ladies are always there to, to back up the men, so I'm glad for that. Um, I just wanted to pray for me, my son, and my pray daughter. Pray for who? You know, we're going through a situation where it really needs a divine intervention. But I said to myself, I am going to make myself available during the convention. You know, because I know that God works and with faith all things are possible. So just pray for us so that things will work out, especially the, the children at their workplaces. They are having some serious issues. All right, we will certainly be offering prayers in a few minutes. Trust in the good Lord to show himself strong and mighty. Let's go to America, all the way to North Carolina, and hear what Han has to say. Welcome, Han. Are you there? Yeah, I'm right. Yes, Chef, I'm here. I'm requesting prayer for my grandson, Michael Jenkins. He's not listening at school. He's five years old, and he's not listening at school. He's disobedient. He's not listening. Okay. What age is he? I think you said Pardon me? Huh? I think you said five years old. He's five years old? Yeah, he's five years old. Oh, yeah. okay. He's not listening. Oh, okay. But five years old, he should be listening. Very attentive. But these are different days. Our prayers be for him, okay? Yeah, okay, Bishop. Thank you. He's Michael Jenkins. And my whole soul to for peace and love in this house. And uh, at my job, too, for more days. For more days. And, and I work with some elderly person. And I need you to pray for them for me, please. So. I'm a caregiver. Okay. Thank you, and we'll be praying. Thank you very much, Bishop. Great. Still have five minutes to go. Can take a couple more calls. Who's Hyacinth Blake? Is that the Hyacinth Blake I know? So how could you miss me on Sunday? You don't worship in this sanctuary. I said, Blake. I won't say where I think you worship. So you miss me. <laughs> and Good. maybe she missed you in the church. <laughs> she wanted to see you in church. <laughs> oh, okay. Wonderful. Good. Good to be here with you all today. Sir, do you want to remind the viewers about the men's gathering on Tuesday of next yeah, week? Yeah, very important. Tuesday the 28th. Yes, Bishop. 7 p.m. Upper Room Sanctuary. Men's gathering. Men, men, 17 years and older. Whatever older that is. We have had three such meetings already. And this will be the first for 2023. 7 o'clock, men. <coughs> Sorry. We hope, to, we hope to have you. Come by, you will be blessed, you will be challenged by the word of God. So ladies, who is that male in your life? Is he a husband? Is he a brother? Is he a uncle? Whoever it is, bring him out, send him out. and Let's have a wonderful time together. On next week, Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock in the upper room, Sanctuary. And a number of things are happening over this period. As we tell you, many, many things will be on. We want you to participate as much as you possibly can. 
the 31st of March will be a dual let the oil flow service because we are going to be involving the youth step up in very significant with significant ways. I'm getting a little tight on time here. Come on. Very significant ways. Leela is in Kingston. Welcome, Leela. Our final call. Can you hear me? Leela, are you there? We are not hearing you. You are not coming through. Yes, 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 I'm there. Go right ahead, please. All right, we are I'm now. not feeling well. I'm asking for prayer. Leela is asking for prayer and she lives in Kingston. I'm not feeling well. All right, thank you for calling. Stay tuned. Prayer will be in another two or three minutes. Bless you. All right, so as I'm making the point that 31st of March will be a dual situation. We'll let the oil flow. Youths will be involved quite some. We spoke of our annual conference, convention, which will be the 16 to 21. But on the 15th, we have our general minister's conference. And that's for us poor faith ministers. Uh, are they going to Hollywell? Yes, sir. That's what I was told from hiking from Newcastle to Hollywell. The youth departments hike Newcastle to Hollywell Park. Okay. So they need our prayers. <laughs> yes, Bishop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll be praying for them for sure. All right. Interesting. Mother's Day banquet. Ladies department. Pre-Mother's Day banquet. 13th of May. A lot of things will be happening because we're in the 40th year celebration and we have brought in other events, okay? So don't think we're overdoing this thing. We hope everybody could support everything, but you know that's not possible. But support as much as you can, as much as is possible. Okay? Marriage enrichments, couple retreats. That's a big one, the 23rd to the 25th of June. You want to plan for that? It'll be at Cardiff All, Cardiff, the Cardiff All and Spa in Runaway Bay. Unlocking your romantic keys. June 22nd to 26th. Oh. So we have two no, different dates here. It's the 23rd. I don't understand this. No. So it's the 23rd to the 25th. So it's June 23 to 25, okay? Don't be confused. 23 to 25 for the PFM Marriage Enrichment Couple Retreat. Please bear those announcements in mind, those that you can. Support will be happy for you to support them. All right, we thank you so much for participating in today's presentation. Jesus. Missionary Raquel Stewart, myself, we thought of doing it this way. And she has brought out a wonderful message as we looked at a woman on a mission determined not to quit the story of the life of Ruth. Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. Where you go, I'll go. Where you live, I live. Where you die, I die. Where you buried, there will I be buried. God do so for me and more, and more if anything but death separates me from you. And when she saw that she was fully made up, fully sold, Naomi just say, okay, I say no more. Stop talking. <laughs> I say no more, Ruth. Let the Lord have his way. Amen. Let us look to God in prayer. You have the prayer list there, my dear? Yes, Bishop. All right, so we're going to pray over these lists. This list, 
that God will minister to you. You go say the prayer also, okay? Okay, Bishop. You have the name, so wherever you are now, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, television, audience, get ready. It's prayer time. Believe God for your touch. Heavenly Father, we come in your presence giving you thanks, giving you glory, yes, giving Lord. you honor. We thank you, mighty God, that you have been with us today. We thank you, God, that you have sustained us. And we thank you, God, for mm. allowing us the privilege, mighty God, to share your word one more time with your people, mighty God. And we thank you, God, for the lives that have been touched Mighty God, renew, transform, deliver, and set free. Mm. And Almighty God, as we're about to exit this platform, Mighty God, we lift these prayer requests, Mighty God, the ones that have called in and the ones, Mighty God, that are written, Mighty God, on the various platforms, Mighty God. We remember Ian Gale in the KPH with stage four Jesus. cancer. We remember Pauline and her son from Spanish Town, Almighty God. Mm. We remember O'Shea, Almighty God. We remember Michael Jenkins, Mighty God, five years old with behavioral issues almighty god remember mm -hmm. anna work issues mighty god plaguing her and the persons that she's working for mighty god remember leela who requires healing in kingston Jesus. mighty god you are a god who can be touched with the feelings of our mm -hmm. infirmities mm -hmm. and mighty god we call upon you mighty god and we know you'll hear and answer and deliver for your people mighty god you say you care for us the songwriter asked the mm -hmm. question does Jesus, Jesus care? Jesus. And the answer says, yes, you care. Hallelujah. You care, mighty God, when our hearts are broken, when we are weary and weary, mighty God. Oh, God, and we look to you, sovereign king. We look to you, everlasting father. Yes, Lord. And we pray as we go, mighty God, you will be with us. You'll continue the healing that you started in our bishop. Because, mighty God, Thank you bring you, it to Lord. completion in the name of Jesus. Glory and the hands of the enemy will not, mighty God, be upon him in the name mm. of Jesus. And we pray for each other, mighty God, for every family represented yes, in this ministry, almighty God, and by extension, their relatives, almighty God. Mm. And we pray for this nation, Jamaica land we love, as we continue, mighty God, to give you and to give the wind a mighty voice, almighty God. We pray that you'll continue to use us for your glory. And this in our 40th year, mighty God, of the plans that have been laid, yeah, we pray you will bless Jesus. them, almighty God, and you will lead us and direct us in the path where we should go. And we be careful to give you all honor, all glory, and all yes, praise. Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. and Hallelujah. amen. Well, thank Hallelujah. you everybody for sharing with us today, this Friday's Jesus. edition. Just a timely reminder that 6 6 30 this evening, Jesus, worldwide Jesus, prayer Jesus. meeting, Sunday morning, the Lord tires at 7 o'clock, our usual service. Mm. We meet for that special Sunday morning live. And funny, we'll be having some visitors too. I got four outstanding men of God from the United States. I just got a call from them yesterday. Bishop, we are in Jamaica. We're coming to worship with you on Sunday morning. So we'll meet those four visitors, men of God, and bless them as they bless us. Youth Ministry relaunch Sunday morning, and importantly, six well not six five o'clock on Sunday evening, five o'clock yeah, yes. Portmore Ministers Fraternal consecration service of its ministers. It's five o'clock here, this church. You are invited, okay? Are you the member of a church in Portmore? You are invited. Are you the member of a church in Portmore? Mm. You are specially invited to the 5 o'clock service on Sunday evening in this sanctuary with the men and women of the cloth of the Portmore Ministers Fraternal. The Lord bless you. Thank you, everybody, on behalf of the studio. Missionary Raquel Stewart. I want to call it her debut presentation yeah she actually took the thing away from me no i gave it to her okay i'm that kind of person i i'm never a selfish person you sit with me you're gonna have to speak and she did a fantastic job the lord bless her and of course members of the team on the other side studio operators god bless you 
We say the Lord's Prayer on a Friday most time. What do we say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you until we meet again. I can't take a heart that's broke making over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take.